just like a normal manual, right? Today we're gonna to be doing a fun little project. We're actually gonna be building a manual trainer. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these in the past. Um, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what a manual trainer is, it's basically an apparatus that you can put your bike in, it'll hold your rear wheel steady, and then you can lift the front wheel up and kind of get a feel for that balance point of a manual. I thought it'd be kind of fun. I haven't tried a manual trainer, but uh, I'm gonna build one. I'll kind of give you guys some feedback on what uh, is real with it, like what it actually feels like to manual versus what the trainer feels like and how you can kind of bridge that gap. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna to need to build this today. So obviously you're gonna need a saw and some wood. Um, I have a little miter saw over here that I'm gonna be using. You don't need a miter saw like that. You could use even a hand saw if you had the motivation to do that. Um, it's a fairly simple process. And so biggest thing is just getting the right materials. So these are the materials I got for this project. So materials wise, you're gonna need two two by sixes. So these are eight feet long each. So two two by sixes at eight feet. And then you're gonna need a two by four at eight feet. You're also gonna to need to get a front wheel hook and then a bungee cord to kind of hold your front wheel in place. Probably gonna need a drill, tape measure, and then some screws and a pencil and some safety glasses and uh, maybe some plans. So <laughs> this is just kind of me helping figure out what I was gonna need. Like I said, two, two by six, eight foot one, two by four. I went with an eight foot one, a hook, a bungee, and some screws. And uh, that's kind of the finished product there. So it looks pretty rough, but we'll do better than that. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm gonna do is cut a 20 inch long two by six section. Um, that's gonna be the brace for the back of the rear wheel, uh, kind of the vertical brace. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the full length two by six, put it on the ground, put the bike on it, and then figure out where that brace is gonna go. So I recommend using the longest bike in your family. Whoever has the biggest bike, that's the one we're gonna use to measure. Um, I got my 29er over there. So we're gonna use that to check it out and see what we can do. So let's go ahead and cut a 20 inch section of this first. All right, so we got our two by six. I measured it out to 20 inches. I put a line there. We're gonna do a quick cut. Before we do any cutting, make sure that you use some safety glasses uh, just to be safe. Um, I have some clear pit vipers that I use all the time. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and start cutting. So now that we got this 20 inch piece cut, it's not screwed down or anything, but that's gonna be our back brace. And then we're gonna go on this full length two by six. This is gonna be where our hook is, kind of towards the front. So maybe I'll put a mark there. So let's try to put a mark right around here, just about two inches back from the front. Then we're gonna take our bike and we're gonna put it on the two by six and kind of figure out where that 20 inch piece needs to go. All right, cool, so we have our full length two by six. This is the full eight inch section. We have our 20 inch two by six that we cut here. It's not screwed down, but it is marked out. And then we have roughly about 20 inches in the back here. And this is gonna be the area for when you pull up on the manual, this is gonna keep you from looping out or having the um, full manual trainer raise up as well. So we're gonna go measure out a 48 inch section for the side brace and two eight inch sections as pads. We have our full length two by six over here, have that pre-cut 20 inch section. And then we have our other cut two by six here. We measured it out. We're gonna mark it at 48 inches. We're gonna mark it at 56 inches and at 64 inches. Um, these cuts don't need to be super precise. As long as you're close, you know, it'll all work out in the end. All right, and this is where you're gonna get to do your first bit of drilling. So we just cut our four foot section here, and then we have our two eight inch sections, which are gonna be pads. Um, so what we're gonna just do is make sure that these are flush, try to get it as flush as possible, right on the end, so one on each side, and then we're gonna go ahead and drill four screws into these. So it's kind of equal. And we're gonna repeat that on that side as well. So let's go ahead and drill those four holes put some screws in there and then we'll attach it to our manual trainer.
score holes in there. We got a foot pad over there, all installed. So next we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this bad boy. We're gonna lay this down just behind where we had our brace. Cool. And then we're gonna make sure that this is centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it real quick, just get it centered. And then we're gonna drill holes in here, probably do four screws again, drilling into this. And then that's gonna be your side to side stabilization. So now that I have one screw installed here, I'm gonna make sure, now that it has a little bit of tension on it, I'm gonna make sure that everything is straight and square. So you're gonna kinda look at this, make sure it's square. You don't want it to be at an angle. So if it's like that, or kinda doing something funny, definitely fix it while you can. Um, and then once you put your second screw in there, it should kind of stabilize that angle. So it looks pretty good right now. I think we're getting pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the second screw in there and uh, let's go from there. At this point, your manual trainer should be pretty stable. So if you grab it and try to shake it, it shouldn't move at all, that's a good sign. So from here, what we're gonna do is, um, this piece is still loose, so we're gonna go ahead, put that up against that back brace, and then we're gonna put one or two screws right here in the center. So now we're gonna take our two by four, we're gonna mark this out. We're gonna do one at 24 inches, and we're gonna cut another 24 inch section. So mark it at 24 and 48. And what these are gonna be are our side rudders that go along the side and squeeze the tire. Um, 24 inches should be long enough to accommodate any wheel, you know, up to a 29. And so that's just a good kind of standard one to do is cut 24 inches. So let's go ahead and cut those and then install them on the side right there. So now you can see this is going to be where our tire is going to go. It's going to go up against that back brace. Um, one thing you can do, like this should fit, you know, a pretty standard 2.5 inch tire. If you have something wider or narrower, then you can kind of um, put your bike in right now and figure out exactly where you need it to squeeze. So say you're on like a little BMX race bike or say you're on like a fat tire bike, maybe you could kick this out a little bit, get like a 2.8 in there. So this is a good time to experiment. Um, I'm gonna just kind of go ahead, put these on here. My bike's set up for a 2.5, so that should be good. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just make mine flush along the sides. That'll give me pretty much perfect for like a 2.35, 2.4 tire. It'll squeeze right in there. Um, but if you do need to adjust that, feel free to adjust that now. All right, guys, we're getting really close. So we basically have almost the full manual trainer, um, but the next little cut is gonna be kind of the most tricky and the one you need to pay the most attention to. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. As you can see, the tire is in here, it's all secured, but what we're gonna need to do just to get extra security is we're gonna end up putting a braced piece from here to here, so in a diagonal line. The one thing you wanna make sure though is that you don't come too far out to where your derailleur or your disc rotor is gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a mark. Basically, here's the derailleur. I'm gonna go back like an inch or so and then make a mark there. So now that I got my mark made behind the derailleur, I'm gonna go up at a diagonal. All right, so from here to here, I'm gonna do about a 19 inch cut on my two by four, and then we're gonna figure out the angle there. 
Okay, so I got my 19 inch piece of 2x4 here. So there's going to be a temptation just to screw it into the side like this, but what we want actually is we want extra bracing here on the tire. Um, there is a way also to do the math on it and kind of figure out what angles you're going to need to cut, but I am a simpleton, and so I like to just kind of back it up a little bit here and then just make a mark. So it looks like I'm going to need to cut an angle roughly like that and roughly like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make those cuts and kind of um, adjust it until it fits correctly. So it looks about right. So let's go ahead and see how good I do on my first try. So believe it or not, somehow that worked out pretty much perfect. Um, it's not super ideal. There's a little bit left on the angle there, but that was my jerry rig way of doing it quickly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, cut the second one. Again, kind of do the same thing. Just line up a 19 inch section that I measured, go ahead and draw an angle and then cut that matching angle and uh, it should be good. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like. But this is the reason that we wanted to do it on the interior is you get a little bit extra bracing on the tire. Um, so that way it's a little bit stronger and less likely to fall over. All right, so I got both of these cut. Um, I cleaned this one up a little bit more too. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bike out and then drill both of those in. And then the last thing we have to do after we get this braced is we just gotta put the wheel hook in and the bungee cord and then it's time to test it out. All right guys, we're almost done. So we've got the manual trainer pretty much all assembled. The last thing we need to do is do the front wheel hook and the bungee, um, and then it's time to test it out. So let's go ahead, finish this up real quick. Um, I always like to pre-drill holes, especially when it's something big like this front wheel hook. So when it's something like this, where it's a pretty big hole, I like to just pre-drill that. So I made a mark, um, you know, about two inches from the front of the board. So I just pre-drilled that hole um, to a quarter inch. This wood already has a small split in it, so definitely needed to pre-drill that just to prevent it breaking after all this hard work. So let's go ahead and do this. That looks pretty good. All right, cool. And then now I got my bungee cord. So I got that. I might just clip this onto one of my spokes, um, or there's another option of having a small like tie down strap kind of going around your wheel and then clipping this onto it. So let's go ahead and see how it works. All right, I almost forgot the most important part. So right here where the wheel is, I need to put a block right here. Um, so that way when I go, it doesn't come forward. So sorry, I almost forgot that part, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw one of those in there really quick. So let's do that. All right, so now we should be good without me busting my ass. So I have that. Um, if you guys do have different wheel sizes in the family, you can keep a spare chunk of two by four and just kind of cut it down to a couple inches. Um, and that way you can kind of put it in there. But with that 24 inch length rudder that goes all the way there, um, it's perfect for a 29 inch wheel. So as you can see, like right there, so we're good to go. All right, let's test this again. All right, we'll do attempt number two, let's see how it goes. So, okay, just like a normal manual, right? It works, it feels pretty similar actually too. Um, I would say the only difference, it feels really similar actually. Um, the only big difference I can feel right off the bat is uh, on a normal manual, when you're going fast, your wheel is, your cranks are able to move forward and back because you have speed, so you can kind of pedal forward and then back pedal a little bit. Um, since the rear wheel is being held in place here, you can only really back pedal, but the pedals can't go forward. So 
I would say that if I were to train on this and actually try to learn how to manual on one of these, I would take my chain off. Um, I think that would really help it a lot to make it feel more natural. But yeah, overall, it's pretty cool. Um, one other thing I want to show you guys too is that with this design, it's really easy to change out the uh, track for different wheel sizes. So this bike's a 29er and um, I'll show you guys what it looks like to change it out to set up for 27.5 or my 26 inch dirt jumper. So let me grab my other bike really quick. So this bike has 26 inch wheels. Um, this is my dirt jumper. And when you put it in the track, that's 24 inches long, like we cut it, then it's definitely has too much play and it's not gonna feel safe when you go to manual. I feel like it's gonna move quite a bit. But what's really cool is if you just take a section of two by four and you cut it to the width of the track, which in this case was two and a half inches, um, just throw that in there, kind of press fits right in there, put that in there, and then it works. So I'll show you guys what that looks like too. Try it out on the dirt jumper really quick. All right, let's see if this is the same. It's a little bit, a little bit touchier on the dirt jumper, but again, feels pretty similar. Woo. Actually, it does feel pretty similar. So I think this is woo, a good trainer. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty much a wrap. Um, I'm really stoked how this thing turned out. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Ian Fitzpatrick. He's a local friend of mine. And uh, he posted a photo of his wife doing these or using one of these the other day. And I kind of stole his idea and his design. And I was like, I just want to make it and show people how easy it is to make these things. So they could do something like this. I mean, 25 bucks, you're good to go. Just get some two by sixes and a two by four. And you know, anyone can pretty much do this at home. If you, even if you don't have very much carpentry skill, um, you know, like I said, I just did kind of rough job on it and it took about 45 minutes. And uh, I feel like you could do that a bit quicker even if you didn't have to deal with the camera. So yeah, huge thanks to everyone for watching this. Um, you know, my thoughts are with all you guys and with everyone kind of going through this time right now with the coronavirus. You know, we're all in it together and I have a ton of love and respect for everyone out there and I just hope that everything ends up being okay. And I can't wait to get back out to a normal life and back out to the races later this year. And um, you know, my thoughts are with everyone that's being affected by it and just trying to figure out some positive ways to fill time during this downtime. And I think that's kind of one of the best things you can do is to stay positive, try to stay busy, but doing positive things and try to just have fun with it while you can, because it's really the only option right now. So I'm gonna do a few more little projects like this. If you guys have any suggestions that you wanna see done, let me know. Um, I have a few ideas already and hopefully you'll see those in the next week or two. So definitely if you could like and subscribe to this video, it'd help me out a ton. I really appreciate you guys and I hope you guys have fun making these. If you have any questions, throw them below and I'll get back to that ASAP. And you guys rock, can't wait to see all your guys' manual trainers and honestly, it feels pretty good. So definitely try it with your chain off if you make one of these. I think you'll be surprised at how much more realistic that'll feel. Um, but all in all, manuals are one of the most fun things you can do out on the trail. You can throw them in anywhere and do little combos. And I don't know, it's just an awesome trick to have in your bag. And so it's my favorite one by far and it just kind of looks cool. So that's why I always try to do it. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you guys later. Thank you.